Hello Soldaten and welcome to another Steel Division Normandy 44 tutorial. Today we will speak about the dynamic frontline mechanic. This is a really important mechanic in the game. Before we are to start, I would like to recommend you guys to check my other two videos, other two tutorials I uploaded regarding the battle groups and the phases. Those two videos will help you understand the frontline mechanic even better. Also, I would encourage you guys to leave your comments and thoughts down below in a comment section and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or you want to see more in the future. So the frontline mechanic is the main focus of the game. The all around purpose and all battle is about the territory which you are trying to get and trying to expand so you can get more points which then you will use to defeat the opponent. The mechanic is influencing game through encounters, tactics, approaches and movements which you will use to try to deal with the enemy. You can check the right side of your screen for the minimap and the percent notice of the territory which you are controlling and the amount of points which you are getting. We cap territory while we are moving with our troops. So in order for us to cap territory, we have to move with our troops forward and slowly they will try and they will get more and more territory. Before we are to get territory, we have to make sure that there are no active opponents in a hundred meters. By active I mean that there are no infantry units which are not pinned down and there are no tanks which have bailed out. One of the first factors which will heavily influence the frontline mechanic when it comes to battle is stress and performance on the battlefield. Troops which are found behind the enemy lines and which are not specialized as we will speak later on in this video will have a heavy toe and will suffer heavy damage or even surrender to the opponent. Troops that are behind the lines will take much more stress and will stress out faster. They will also take a heavy toe towards its performance, accuracy and damage which they will deal to the opponent. It is not advisable and you should avoid at all costs to be behind enemy line with unit which is not capable of fighting behind the enemy lines. During this tutorial we will also mention several other mechanics and several other occasions which are really connected to the frontline mechanic. First of all being the surrender. Surrender is a mechanic which is described as the best way to defeat opponent. However, before you are to force the enemy to surrender, you have to have three conditions set in place to do that. First is that enemy is pinned down that he has no ally troop in 100 meters or its leader in 200 meters and that your unit is in 100 meters or close. If this is to happen, enemy troop or your own troop will be captured and will surrender its arms to the opponent. I would also like to mention that having a leader which will help your troops fighting behind the enemy lines or even helping them at the front line when enemy is breaking through is crucial. That leader will provide your troops with the necessary boost in morale, accuracy, performance and stress lowering capabilities when it comes to a breakthrough or fighting behind the enemy lines. This way they will take less penalties fighting the opponent. Another cool feature which is heavily influenced by the dynamic frontline mechanic is possibility to infiltrate your troops. These troops will move behind the enemy line, will take no serious penalty and will not push the enemy line and they will not have a visual confirmation that they are here. This means that your troops can sneak and hide in a critical spots and when enemy is to come he will think that it is safe. However, your troops are safe behind the enemy line and just preparing when to jump. Type of troops which can infiltrate behind the line without moving it and without making a visual confirmation are AT units like Panzerschrecks, Bazookas or Piat teams. 
paratroopers or Fulsham Jagers and scouts. These units will move through the front line and behind the front line without moving it and showing to the enemy that you have any troops behind. Dynamic frontline mechanic is a visual confirmation of the frontline troops and presence. So this takes a real influence towards the tactics which you are to use against your opponent. While your troops are slow and especially infantry units, your vehicles will have to reload, they have to aim and they have to fire before they are to react. So there are no immediate reactions. Some people say that flanking in this game is broken just because uh, your opponent will see where you are pushing and where that blue or red line is moving and he will turn that way. That in some way can be true, however you have the infiltrator, infiltrators as we told which you can use. And also that will put up more pressure on your opponent and it will produce more stress because he will have to redeploy those slow units on that side where you are trying to push. So it is not that black and white as people are saying. However, it is noted that you cannot flank in this game normally like you would do. While as I told, this dynamic frontline tactic is not that friendly towards flanking, however, this can be used to your advantage. I developed a tactic called two-step. This is a tactic where you are not flanking like you normally would, but you are flanking with one extra more step, which will ensure that your flanking is a surprise. I will not go in details about it, because I will make a special video explaining several ways of making a two-step flanking maneuver. However, I will mention a general concept of two-step flanking. The idea is to have one decoy flanking troops which will go on one flank and will put the pressure, will take some resources from the enemy, you will have a frontal attack which will basically try to put pressure on the middle position and then we will have a big force on completely opposite side which will try and do a proper flanking which will have a surprising effect. In the end, I hope that you guys enjoyed in this video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. That will help this channel a lot. Also, you should check my Facebook and my Twitter page where you will get more information about our videos, our schedules and so on and so forward. Furthermore, I hope that you guys will buy this game honestly. I will make a review about it, but I'm really impressed with this game. You can leave your opinions, your experiences with the game or your expectations about the game down below in the comment sections. Until next time, thank you guys and see ya!